So I used to fish all the time to eat because I'm a fisherman, I'm a bass fisherman. So I used to stop at lakes and ponds and just fish. And every night, every month, I get run off from somebody's land. Hey, get away from here. Hey, move along, that's not yours. Hey, stop fishing here. I just get run off. And he didn't understand. And one time I had fish on the line. They said, you got fish on that line? I said, yeah, throw them back. I had to throw them back because I used to stop at rest areas with them little cast iron grills. I kept charcoal in my car. I started a fire and I eat fish. Then some days I wouldn't eat. So that they thought I was just fishing, but I was eating. So I said one day, I said, man, you know what? One day, man, I'm going to get myself some land. I'm going to buy myself a piece of dirt. So fast forward, God bless me. I get on TV when I'm 38. I'm on Showtime at the Apollo. Lord, have mercy. They gave me my money. I saved my money up. I saved $250,000. I said, I'm going to give me some land. I went to Texas. And I'm about to buy some land. But before I went to buy the land, I was curious. I just had the thought. I said, man, I wonder how much land is on earth? How, how many acres is on earth? Because you know it's not going to change. You know, God lets you fly. God lets you dive on the water. God don't let you make dirt. Can't make dirt. So I looked it up. It's roughly over, just a little bit over, 36 billion acres of land. 36 billion acres of land. So I just got a little bit more curious and I said, well, how many people on earth? I looked it up and it was about 6 billion people on earth. So I did some Steve Harvey thinking. I said, okay, if it's 36 billion acres of land and it's about 6 billion people on earth, everybody ought to have 6 acres of land. I just me, you know, I just, just think. So I asked God, could I have six acres? That's all I wanted. Because you know the one thing I wanted? I didn't care if I put a house on it or nothing. I just wanted to be a stand somewhere and couldn't nobody run me off. So I got this money, man. I saved my money. I saved $250,000. I'm going and I'm looking for some land. The first day I get there, I see a piece of land in Texas, so beautiful, I couldn't believe it. It had rolling hills, had a pond on it where I could fish. I, the dude took me over there, I look at the land, and I'm, and I'm looking out, I said, man, this is great right here. I said, sir, how much is this right here? He said, well, it's about $600,000. I said, man, I ain't, I ain't got that kind of money. He said, well, how much do you have? I said, I got 250000 I said, well, let me think about it, man. He said, let me think about it. And I was standing there, and then I stopped. I said, sir, can I ask you a question, man? How many acres of land is that? He said, this is six acres. Six. Six years ago. I just asked God, just give me six. See, I didn't want a whole lot of acres. I just wanted my cut. Just give me my six. And so I said, ain't this crazy? So I thought about it. I said, man, what can we work out? Right before I got ready to say it, the guy that took me over there said, Steve, let me show you something right quick. He took me over this hillbilly's house. Took me over this hillbilly house named Jerry Campbell. I was a little nervous about meeting him, man, because I didn't like the way he talked, but mess around turned out to be one of the finest men I ever met in my life. Became a father figure to me. It's an old white man. He took me to his house. He said, let me show you something. He took me over and showed me this land, and it was massive. It had three lakes on it. It had rolling hills. It had trees. It was unbelievable, man. I said, man, this is incredible. I said, man, how much is this? He said, this 16 acres. I said, hey, man, I ain't got that kind of money. Let me go on back over here to this dude where I can, Mike can cut a deal. He said, well, let me ask you something. What was you going to give that man over there? I said, well, I hadn't worked it out yet because all I got is $250,000. He said, well, listen, I'm in a little bit of a tight right now. He said, if you can bring me 250000 cash by tomorrow, I'll give you this 16 acres. I showed up next day, $250,000. 
16 acres. See, that's grace and favor right there. That's what that is. So my first piece of land was 250 acres. So I said, man, this is the land that I'm going to save for my family. I'm going to fish on the rest of my life. I'm going to be an old man. So then I got to thinking. I said, hold up, man. You mean you have not because you asked now. I asked for six, six years ago. He showed me six, but he gave me 16. So I went to God. I said, God, listen to this. I'm from Cleveland. I got a couple partners that's locked up. They probably won't be using they six. So I said, Lord, could I have they six? And he said, yeah. So every time acres came up available around that 16, I bought it. And I bought six more. And then I went back and I said, well, Lord, you know, all my friends ain't locked up, but some of them just ain't, you know, they just ain't, well, they just ain't nothing. You know, they, they don't want nothing. They ain't trying. Could I had A6? So he gave me the A6. And so then I was doing a show one time uh, on HBO, a friend of mine. He's an atheist. He don't believe in God, but he got a late night show. And he asked me to do the show, and I thought I was going to be on there telling jokes. But come to find out, he was doing a show on atheism. And I turned him down. I said, I don't want to talk. He said, man, why don't you come and talk? You're a man of faith. I said, well, I don't like arguing with people who don't believe in God. You don't believe in God. I think you're a fool. And I'm pretty sure since I believe in God, you think I'm a fool. And I don't think two fools ought to be standing around talking. Let's just end that. He said, man, come on and do the show. So we did the show. I hated it. But after the show, I counted all them atheists. And it was six of them. So I asked God, could I have a six? Because I know good and well, they ain't going to ask him for nothing. So he gave me the six. Next thing you know, I had 270 acres of land. It's been important for me to empower my children, but not only my children, but thousands of young people across the country. And education is the key for a lot of people. But when I speak at colleges and stuff, I tell people, number one thing in your world is not your education. It's your dream. So what you dreaming about, y'all? What you still dreaming about? What is God still showing you in your imagination? What are you so afraid of? Why would you not take that leap and go for it before you mess around and die? Why would you not go and see what God really got for you before you leave this world? Why would you hang on to a job? Here's what happens with the job. If you live in paycheck to paycheck right now, when you retire, they're going to give you one third of what you can't live on now. They're going to give you a gold watch and a turkey, and they're going to set you on out to pasture. If I was you before... I lead this world, I go see what God really got for me. Just take a chance. Too many times people come to show business because they just like the line, the look, the look of it, they passionate about it, or they pursue something that they're passionate about. Please make sure before you come to this business that you are gifted at it. The Bible says your gift will make room for you and put you in the presence of great men. It does not mention your passion. You have to be gifted. 
Most people are not successful today because they never tie their work ethic to their to they gift. They keep tying it to their education and their passion. Once you learn the principles of success, you can apply it to anything. Do you know you can get rich selling tomatoes? You can get rich cutting hair. The dude that used to cut my hair, I met him in the 80s down in Texas. He used to cut my, when I walked in Bob's shop, I paid $10. When he stopped cutting my hair, he was making $1,500 a cut, and he cut my hair five times a week. Same haircut. <laughs> Mess around and got clicked in out there in Hollywood, and it was $1,500 a haircut. So when he wasn't cutting my hair, sometimes he cut Bernie hair. Then he go over there and cut Sam's hair. Then he cut DL's hair. It's $1,500 a cut. He would finish up some weeks, man, and do make $15,000 in a week cutting hair. It, once you learn the principle of success, you can apply them to 